All right, gonna do a video going through some scriptures that reprove and expose the hyper-Calvinistic cult known as the Westboro you know, Baptist Church. They have very little in common with historical Baptists uh, via their you know, false doctrine and all their Calvinistic heresies. And when you really get down to it, Calvinism is just Reformed Catholicism. You see, Calvinism comes from Augustinianism, which in turn comes from Gnosticism, which in turn comes from Luciferianism. And so does Catholicism. Catholicism traces back to, you know, obviously Augustine is a saint in the Catholic Church, obviously. So they both have the same roots, Calvinism and Catholicism. And these scriptures right here uh, reprove, should serve as basically a reproof and rebuke to the hyper-Calvinistic cult called the Westboro you know, Baptist Church. They've been raised up by the devil to make actual born-again Christians look like, you know, a bunch of clowns and buffoons. So first of all, uh, the Westboro Baptist Church are the types who have hearts that study destruction. Proverbs chapter 24, verses 1 to 2. Be not thou envious against evil men, neither desire to be with them, for their heart studieth destruction, and their lips talk of mischief. That's Westboro right there. Their heart study destruction, their lips talk of mischief. You know, they go out and do damage to the body of Christ through their just wicked nonsense and all this other stuff, and they are, they rejoice in the destruction of the wicked. When, you know, Ezekiel thirty three eleven says, God takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked. Yeah. Uh, next point is that the saint is not to be glad and rejoice when his enemy stumbles and falls. However, this is exactly the attitude that Westboro has when their enemies stumble. They rejoice and are glad. Proverbs 24, verse 16 down to verse 18. Says... For a just man falleth seven times, and riseth up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. Rejoice not when thy enemy falleth, and let not thy heart be glad when he stumbleth, lest the Lord see it, and it displease him, and he turn away his wrath from him. Do we see that with Westboro? No, we don't see that. We see them rejoicing when their enemy falls. Next point is that Jesus Christ rebuked his uh, rebuked the apostles James and John when they wished destruction and fire from heaven upon a village of Samaritan sinners who wouldn't receive Christ. See, he rebukes them, but if they were Westboro, they'd be like, they, they basically were doing what Westboro would do, which is basically to want to call down fire upon the wicked and upon their enemies. Luke chapter 9, verses 52 down to verse 56. Here is Jesus Christ himself rebuking Westboro, the Westboro Baptist cult. The Westboro Calvinist cult, I'll put it that way. Luke chapter 9, verse 52 down to verse 56. And sent messengers before his face, and they went and entered into a village of the Samaritans to, to make ready to make ready for him. And they did not receive him, because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. And when his disciples James and John heard that, saw this, they said, Lord, wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, even as Elias did? But he turned and rebuked them, and said, Ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of. For the Son of Man has not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. Now again, is this what the kind of mentality Westboro has? You know, uh, basically calling out fire from heaven, wanting to call down fire from heaven. That, yeah, it's exactly the kind of mentality they have. And what does Jesus Christ say? You know not what manner of spirit you are of. That, that's how he rebukes Westboro. And like I said earlier, you know, God has no pleasure in the death of the wicked, and he does not will that any perish, but that rather that should come to repentance of their sins. Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 11. These are scriptures that seem to go over the head of the Westboro Baptist, you know, Calvinistic cult members. But again, they're the fruit of Calvinism. So, Ezekiel 33, verse 11. Say unto them, As I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that, but that the wicked uh, turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will ye die, O house of Israel? Now, I understand he's talking to Israel, but we see there that he has no pleasure in the death of the wicked. Okay, now compare this over to 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. 2 Peter 3, 9. It says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But you see, with Westboro, with their Calvinistic theology, they believe that God actually creates certain people just to damn them to hell. But what does the, the word of God say right here? He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And this ties into the next point, is the fact that God wants all to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4 to 6. And this also goes directly against their, their, their Calvinistic theology, their Calvinist heresy of limited atonement. 1 Timothy 2, verse 4 to 6. Who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth, for there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. All, you know, he wants all to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. So it seems that, 
you know, Jesus Christ here is contradicting the heresies of John Calvin, which Westboro actually says, if you don't believe in, in John Calvin, you're basically damned. They say that on their, um, on their website. Next point is that the Pharisees criticized Jesus Christ for sitting and eating with publicans and sinners. Christ's intent was to call sinners to repentance, contrary to what Westboro does via their wicked nonsense on the streets or at military funerals. In fact, Westboro openly says they're not trying to win souls, but just tell them that God hates them. But what does Jesus Christ do? He does the opposite. And it's actually the Pharisees that are criticizing him for doing that. Uh, which shows how the Westboro Baptist, Westboro Calvinist cult, they're just the, the spiritual children of the Pharisees. Luke chapter 5, verse 30 down to verse 32. Luke chapter 5, verse 30 down to verse 32. But their scribes and Pharisees murmured against his, against his disciples, saying, Why do ye eat and drink with publicans and sinners? And Jesus answering said unto them, They that are whole need, need not a physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. He came to call them to repentance, not be like Westboro and you know push them away from the gospel, push them away from salvation. Uh, next point, the final point I want to bring up is the fact that the reason why Westboro faced lots of backlash and anger on the streets is not because they're being persecuted for righteousness sake, but because they're just a bunch of wicked, nasty jerks and bullies, you know, and they're basically going out and doing damage to the body of Christ. Uh, Proverbs chapter 15, verse one to four. Here's why, you know, if you're a Westboro cult member, here's why you're persecuted on the streets. Proverbs, Proverbs 15, verse one down to verse four. A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. The tongue of the wise useth, useth knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools, pour, mouth of fools pour, poureth out foolishness. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but a perverseness therein is a breach of the spirit, or breach in the spirit, sorry. So we see there, a soft, air, a soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. See, that's why Westboro faces the backlash on the streets, because they're using grievous words, thus stirring up anger. See, they're not being persecuted for righteousness' sake. They're going out and doing damage to the body of Christ. They're going out and making a mockery of pretty much anybody who opposes the sin of sodomy, uh, via they're just their, their idiotic nonsense they do out in the streets. Uh, that's plain and simple. You know, the grievous words get an angry response. And, you know, can you really blame them? I mean, can you blame these people for responding angrily? I mean, if you're having a funeral picketed, you know, could you, I mean, just getting angry is kind of the natural response. And by the way, too, where in scripture are we told to pick at funerals? Where in scripture are, you know, oh, we're preaching the gospel. You're not preaching the gospel. You you yourself, if you're a Westboro cult member, you yourself are saying you're not trying to win souls. I showed that in one of my other videos, uh, how they openly say we're not trying to win souls. We're just trying to tell them, put these signs in your face saying God hates you. Yeah, they're basically being raised up by Satan to hinder the spreading of the gospel, which is what Calvinism really is. It's an attack on the gospel. So don't be deceived by the hyper-Calvinist cult known as Westboro, you know, Baptist Church. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.